Well, in a similar analysis from the Seventh-day Adventists, cross-sectional analysis of about 60,000 people by different dietary patterns, non-vegetarians, semi-vegetarians, pesco-vegetarians, lacto-ovo-vegetarians, vegans, the group with the lowest percentage of diabetes was the vegans. This is a very interesting analysis, also by Dr. Satija, a plant-based dietary pattern and incidence of type 2 diabetes in U.S. men and women results from three prospective cohort studies, the Physician's Health Study, Nurses' Health Study 1, Nurses' Health Study 2. And they had about 4 million person years of follow-up, and they put them into deciles. And if you were in the highest decile of a healthy plant-based diet, you had about a 34% lower hazard of developing diabetes, incident diabetes, type 2. And you had about a, if you had an unhealthy plant-based diet, about a 16% increased hazard of developed incident type 2 diabetes. All right. Well, along the theme of it's never too early to begin, never too late to begin. Changes in plant-based diet indices and subsequent risk of type 2 diabetes in women and men, three U.S. prospective cohorts. And this is about 3 million person years of follow-up. And each 10% increase in a healthy plant-based diet over four years was associated with a 9% lower risk of incident diabetes. Never too late to start. And in this interesting analysis of the Seventh-day Adventists, at least weekly intake of an animal product versus none was associated with a 74% higher odds of having diabetes. This is a great randomized controlled trial along those lines. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it by Dr. Barnard and his group. And they randomized uh, 99 subjects for 22 weeks with adult onset type 2 diabetes to either a plant-based diet or the American Diabetes Association diet. And the plant-based diet arm lost significantly more weight and their LDL cholesterol fell significantly more than the American Diabetes Association diet. Now in subjects who did not change their medication, uh, this is the blue is the vegan arm and the red is the American Diabetes Association diet arm. And for of, of these who did not change their medications, because you can imagine if your glucose is falling a lot, they may have to back off on some of your high glucose medications for your own safety. So for those who did not have medication changes, the hemoglobin A1C, a measure of diabetes, fell significantly more in the vegan arm than it did in the American Diabetes Association arm. But overall, not included, not taking into account the medication changes, uh, there was a trend in the plant-based arm, but not a significant one. This is really cool work from Dr. Dew. And we talked about his work with plant, with eating more fresh fruit and cardiovascular disease. And in this analysis, they asked if you eat more fresh fruit, is, does that impact incident, meaning developing diabetes? And also, what if you even have diabetes in the first place? Does eating more fruit do anything? Well, here for incident diabetes, developing diabetes, this is in 480 plus thousand people. The more fresh fruit you ate, the less likely you were to develop diabetes. Okay, that sound makes sense. What if you had diabetes at the get-go? 30,000 people had diabetes at the beginning of this study. You ate more fresh fruit, is it good? Is it bad? Well, in this analysis, it was good. More fresh fruit was associated with living longer, uh, associated with fewer diabetes complications like visual and kidney issues. Okay. Impact of a plant-based diet. We talk a bit about cardiovascular health, cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure, about weight, about diabetes. Let's touch on some novel or less discussed risk factors and quality of life. 
So novel or maybe less discussed topics, genes, you mentioned that study earlier where genes matter, but lifestyle matters too. And, you know, we can't change our genes, although now with CRISPR technology, that may not no longer be true, but for the most part, we can't change our genes. Um, but we may be able to change which ones are expressed. And what am I getting at? Well, there's a very interesting study by Dr. Ornish where they took people with early stage prostate cancer. It's not randomized, but they had them have a healthier lifestyle, eating more healthily, regular exercise, psychosocial support, and they biopsied the prostate beginning and after about three months. And they found that many pro-cancer genes were down-regulated in their expression, and many anti-cancer genes were up-regulated in their expression, meaning you couldn't change your genes, but you could change which ones speak, making the healthy ones speak more loudly and the unhealthy ones speak more softly. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, so also the microbiome, uh, of course, that's a vast area, and there's gosh, trillion bacteria in each one of us. So you could say that we're really the parasites. And it's pretty clear that eating a high fiber plant-based diet leads to a more healthful, optimal microbiome, which is intimately related to our health in ways we're just beginning to scratch the surface of, whereas animal-based foods may promote a healthy microbiome, much less so. Um, and according, for example, if you eat high fiber, that promotes the, the replication of healthy microbiome, um, and it will digest, eat the fiber, turn it into a short chain fatty acid called butyrate, which will seep across the intestinal wall, helping the integrity of the intestinal wall. It may make intestinal wall cells make less cholesterol, can get absorbed into the body, be anti-inflammatory help avoid insulin resistance and have a myriad of effects. So you really are what you eat. Um, the, uh, I'm just gonna jump down to endothelial progenitor cells or EPCs. This is very interesting as well. You know, our body turns itself over our, our skin, our, our heart, our blood vessels, uh, turns itself over over time, uh, just like the endothelial cells. And there are endothelial progenitor cells that come from the bone marrow that go and kind of replace the older, sicker endothelial cells that we have in our blood vessels, in the walls of our blood vessels. And so, and it turns out that if you have more endothelial progenitor cells in your blood, that is associated with better cardiovascular outcomes. And in a small randomized trial of young women in Okinawa, they fed them either their regular diet or a diet enriched with green leafy vegetables. And those who ate more green leafy vegetables did better, meaning they had more endothelial progenitor cells. How about quality of life? Um, hugely important. Changes in plant-based diet quality and health-related quality of life in women. And an increase in a healthy plant-based diet index was associated with improvements in physical and mental health-related quality of life in women as measured by the SF36 score. And now I'm blanking where I saw this, but there's a very recent large study looking at frailty where eating more plant-based protein was associated with improvements in frailty and more animal-based proteins, less so. But you have to forgive me, I just don't have that slide in here. Okay, so we talked about the impact of a plant-based diet on cardiovascular health, cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure, weight, diabetes, novel risk factors, quality of life. What about mortality? Well, changes in plant-based diet quality and total and cause-specific mortality. In this analysis with over 700 thousand person years of follow-up, they compared, compared with persons whose indices remain stable among those 
with the highest quintile and diet score with a healthy plant-based diet, you had about a 10% lower hazard and an unhealthy plant-based diet, you had about a 12% higher hazard of mortality. And this is a wonderful study, fruit and vegetable intake and mortality results from two prospective cohorts of US men and women, and also a meta-analysis of 26 cohorts. So in the prospective cohorts of US men and women, five servings per day of fruits and vegetables versus two servings per day of fruits and vegetables was associated with a 13% lower hazard of death. And in a meta-analysis with follow-up ranging from about four and a half to 30 years with one point, almost 1.9 million subjects from 29 different countries Five versus two servings a day of fruits and vegetables was associated with the same 13% reduction in mortality. Um, and in another separate meta-analysis, each serving of fruits and vegetables a day was associated with a 5% reduction in mortality.